Let's switch over to chemistry. Now you got 99% in it, second in the state. What were your what are your key tips for people studying chemistry? Um with chemistry, I think you do need to be aware that there is a lot of writing in the subject. Like you have to be able to explain your ideas really well and succinctly. So you can't just focus on like the calculations and like the more mathy aspects of it and like the chemical reaction side of it. You do have to be aware that there are some questions where you have to write mini essays in a sense. So you really need to be conscious of like the whole ness of verbs and all that and like how to structure and explain or an evaluate style question and make sure that like these are things that you're practicing. For me with chemistry, I found that it was very important that my notes were constant. Like I took really like succinct notes. I handwrite them because if I'm typing them, it doesn't go into my head as well. And the recollection isn't as strong for me. I use different colors for keywords just so when I went over my notes, I could see what was important and what I needed to know better. And I found that by having my notes slightly ahead of where I was in class meant that I went into class feeling a little bit more confident. And I felt, and I actually, it was just a really good consolidation of my understanding. In contrast, when I went into class without having an idea what was going on before, I felt really embarrassed. I felt really shy. I couldn't answer questions. I didn't really fully grasp what was going on. And while I came out learning stuff, I didn't have build the same level of confidence and it just wasn't the same positive experience. And I think that was something for my style of learning. Like I had really good science teachers and they like explain stuff really well. But just for me, especially, I felt that if I was confident in class, I would do better. Mm-hmm. And the other thing was just lots of practice. So I bought these books, um, the Excel books and this, I think it was the Strive books, um, mm-hmm. which are really good. They have like years and years of past HSC questions sorted by modules and mm-hmm. lots of practice exam papers. And like every time I did a topic in class, I would sit down, like if we did module 5.1, for example, mm-hmm. I would go to the book and I'd do like 30 questions practice short response questions and 10 multiple choice questions like just a mini exam on that one topic and just that's just and then do that again before the hsc yeah no that that's awesome and i think you know using those resources like past past papers questions uh looking at exemplar answers they're always going to be key right and in terms of the actual exam let's talk about it so You've got a multiple choice section and then you've got about 80% of the exam based around short answers, right? So take us through how you approach each of those questions in the short answer section because they have to ask you a couple of seven to nine markers. So I'd love to hear how you actually structured those answers. And then tell us if if you do have a formula of a kind, how you approached three marker, four marker, et cetera. Yeah, so I think with the short answer, um, one thing to be aware of, and this happens in the multiple choice as well, they actually in chemistry and physics as well, they structure it from easiest to what they think is easiest to what they think is hardest. So the questions at the beginning are the ones that you shouldn't be overcomplicating too much. They're mostly going to be two to four markers, maybe a five marker here or there. And I think with like two markers, you don't have to write too much. Um, three, four markers, yeah, you should write a little bit more. One thing in chemistry I find important is that whenever there's an opportunity to write a chemical equation, write one, make sure it's balanced, you include states, um, all of the usual stuff. Just because there might just be a hidden mark here and there for that. Make sure you're really strict on your significant figures because there actually is a mark there that you don't know where it is. And if you get the significant figures wrong on one question, you might lose a mark on that question. Then with the longer response questions, you do have to, like before you go into them, actually sit there and think, for a few minutes if it's not a calculation question especially with calculation questions you can just work through it but if there's a seven mark or five or six mark writing question you actually have to read it work out the under like the explanation like in my hsc there were a few questions that were longer response towards the end where they were really difficult concepts that you had to try and work out what they were before you could write the answer and flesh it out Mm. and just really following like the like most of them are going to be explained questions, just really following that structure of cause and effect. So writing down like, so starting by opening, by writing like an observation from the question, then explaining it, going into what does this cause and just using that logical structure 
to just flesh out a response that can be a page long. So your your those page long responses, were they broken up into paragraphs ever or was it always just one block? I mean, it really depends on what the question is. Um, I think in our HSC, the longest mark question, which was a seven mark question, they really just gave the structure to you because they were like, talk about these four things. And you're right, right. Like there's four ideas. That's four mm. paragraphs kind of. I think... Sometimes you can just write one big block if it's all connected, but sometimes if you do need to be addressing more than one idea, a paragraph structure works really well. Yeah, great. And you also mentioned that it does progress in terms of difficulty. So did you still find that doing the paper in the order that it was given was the best way or did you ever deviate from the prescribed order? I always did them in order. Um, I don't know. It just feels weird to do them out of order for me. It's more scary that you might accidentally skip something. Um, but also I think the benefit of doing it in order is you start off with questions that are really easy. They mm. boost confidence, like really just basic, like you should know this. This is like essential knowledge for the course questions. And then building up to the harder questions, some of the multiple choice questions might have like eight lines of working. And you don't want to start off with that in an exam. If you start off with that sort of question, you're just going to be like really flustered for the next three hours of the exam, which isn't where you want to be. So if you start off with a question, you can just look at, circle the answer and then move on to the next question. You're already ahead of like the 1.8 mark per minute pace or whatever. You feel really good about yourself and it just gives you like the best mindset to do well in that exam. Yeah, that's a great point. So the, the fact that the paper progresses from easy to difficult lends itself to just doing the paper in order, right? Because normally if I, and I remember this happened with a maths exam once, we, we had an assessment and the very first question was probably the hardest question. And it threw everyone. Everyone was just pausing. T the clock was ticking. People were freaking out. You know, I heard like the pencils drop. Um, it was pretty funny. So what, what I made sure I did was I actually did ignore that question or at least I like had a quick attempt and I knew it was right. I just circled it and then kept going until I, because I was a little bit flustered already from seeing a hard question straight away or a question that I couldn't do, I found a question that I could comfortably do, like what you're saying here with, with like circling the easiest question, go and find that. I would actually seek that out, do it to get that confidence, to get that positive momentum. And I would come back. And I remember I got that hard question at the end because it clicked because my mind had, had suddenly, you know, switched into gear and it was more open and it wasn't freaking out and stressed. And if you stress, you're going to block that, that clarity of thought. So um, that's a good point. Do the paper in order if it does go easy to difficult. And if you get an assessment in class where they give you a harder question at the start, you know, as you say, you don't like to skip them in case you forget it, but don't, if you are in a, a situation where you actually don't know the answer, just leave it, go and do a couple of other questions that are easier and then go back to it. So that would be a, a small ad there.